There's a problem we often have when we read John's Gospel at this point, because many people who know John a little bit or have heard sermons about it associate John with the phrase eternal life. And when we hear the phrase eternal life, it's easy for us to imagine that this means a kind of platonic immortality, a life in a different sphere entirely, which is not about space and time and matter, not about bodies, not about creation as we know it, but an entirely different sort of existence where maybe a disembodied soul might be happy along with a disembodied God. And when people hear this phrase eternal life, they somehow think, well, a life that is going on and on forever, although in a world beyond time itself, so quite what that would mean, philosophers have argued and puzzled about. This is not what John is talking about when he has Jesus refer to eternal life. In the Jewish world of Jesus' day, people regularly thought, people of all sorts of backgrounds regularly thought about the present age and the age to come. They divided history broadly into two. The present age they knew was a time of sorrow, of injustice, of oppression, of lots of bad things happening. But one day they believed the creator God would usher in his new age, the new day that would dawn, and then everything would be sorted out. That's what John is talking about with the phrase which is translated in some versions, eternal life. He means the life of the coming new age. And the point about Jesus' work in John's gospel is that the life of the coming new age comes forward into the present in the person of Jesus so that suddenly we find new creation bursting into the present world, unready as it is. And that gives the dramatic tension of Jesus' story, where the new creation is happening here and now, while the old creation is still rumbling on. As the prologue to the gospel says, he came to what was his own and his own people didn't accept him. The world was made through him and the world didn't know him. But to anyone who did accept him, he gave the right to become God's children. And the word became flesh. God's creation gave birth, as it were, to new creation. Or rather, God the creator came to birth within his own world. So the message of John's Gospel is a message about creation and new creation. But how is this to be accomplished? It's to be accomplished through the work of Jesus, who from chapter 1 onwards is seen as and hailed as Israel's Messiah. 